fellow Belizeans, I am honored to bring you greetings at this festive and symbolic time of the year. For Belizeans and the people the world over, crossing the bridge from one year to another is a passage that carries immense hope. Across our blessed land, reasons for hope are abundant. For the first time in a generation, our people and communities are infused with optimism. The worst of the COVID pandemic is behind us. More Belizeans than ever are working. The national economy is expanding at a record pace and the nation is deepening its democracy and re-examining its constitution. As I have visited with Belizeans in villages, towns and cities and spent time on the ground in each district, it is clear to me that a renewed national pride enlivens homes workplaces, and the public square. This positive energy will, I am sure, suffuse 2023 with spectacular rewards. A few days ago, for example, stakeholders in the all-important sugar sector bridged their differences so that we expect a bumper crop in both volume and price. To make this happen, my administration expanded our fuel and road repair subsidies supported improving crop yields as a priority and in a major first will facilitate substantial fertilizer support to farmers thanks to the government of Morocco. The positive breakthrough in the sugar industry is but one of many successes in a surging agricultural industry where the export of livestock and grains swell with each passing month and where a nascent coconut subsector is poised for a boom in production, and where stakeholders are working to restore the luster of the citrus industry. Alongside agriculture, tourism, overnight and cruise tourism, the BPO sector, manufacturing and construction form the bedrock of the Belizean economic engine, robust and resilient in equal parts. Genuine entrepreneurs, investors small and large, and businesses of every stripe have and will continue to benefit from efficiencies and reforms that ratify this administration's high regard for the prosperity that only private enterprise can generate. The near miraculous economic rebound of the last two years has pushed down unemployment to historic lows, with poverty rates finally falling in tandem. And these important measures will continue to move in the right direction as we intensify our focus on policies and programs that unlock chances for upward mobility. I am particularly proud to highlight that 2023 will bring more money into the pockets of some 30,000 Belizean workers who are poised to enjoy a minimum wage of $5 per hour at the start of the new year. This $5 per hour is a 50% increase for one in every six of the lowest paid workers in our country. Earned by the employee's work, not gifted by the employer, the individual empowerment conferred by a living wage is a foremost responsibility of the state and the foundation of social justice. Adam Smith, known as the father of capitalism, reminded us in his theory of moral sentiments that the ethical basis of society lies in compassion for other human beings. Reversing the equality gap of recent years is not just a societal interest, but a national imperative. And it is this commitment to compassion that compelled us to allocate earlier this month an additional $4 million for Carl Huchner Memorial Hospital to ensure tertiary health care is improved for those who can least afford private care. Furthermore, 2023 will span access to NHI program to 208,427 Belizeans. In the new year, 59,726 Belizeans will enroll for the first time in a program where doctors and medicines are quickly and affordably available. And in 2023, 
the accelerated rollout of starter homes, the awards of housing and farmland, and the extension of our free high school program will all represent a scaling up and scaling out of this administration's most impactful social justice priorities. In simple and straightforward terms, you should measure our success by keeping count of every new small business, every new job, every new homeowner, every new farmer, every new graduate, every Belizean better off than before we took office in the win we pledged to deliver. The year we leave behind, 2022, was a turbulent one. A devastating war in Ukraine, skyrocketing prices for fuel, costly supply chain disruptions, 40-year highs for inflation, and economic uncertainty all rendered a post-pandemic recovery more difficult for most countries. Judged within this upheaval, our country's performance is even more exceptional. At the start of 2021, my administration's first year, I encouraged small steps to stabilize the nation and reverse the alarming decline at the hands of the UDP. Those steps rescued the Belizean dollar, transformed the public finances, refocused investments in critical areas, and inspired confidence in the private sector, the IFIs, and foreign investors. At the start of this year, those steps became strides as the economy expanded. Thousands of new jobs emerged. Public sector employees had their salaries restored. Investments poured in, and Belize enjoyed global acclaim for the spectacular commitment to conservation and debt reduction. Our efforts at debt reduction has reduced the national debt by over $1 billion, our debt to GDP ratio went from 133% under the UDP to 63%, a remarkable accomplishment to say the least. And now, in 2023, these steps and strides will become leaps forward as the twin propellants of tourism and agriculture elevate the quality of life yet higher, even as governance reforms cultivate greater inclusiveness, transparency, and national happiness. To every Belizean, I offer my gratitude for your contribution to the national welfare. We are a nation of limitless possibilities, a land where dreams spring forth from a soil rich and resilient, a country whose national fabric is woven from the timeless values of dignity, hard work, fairness, compassion, and mutual respect. And on behalf of our cabinet and the many men and women who are your government, I wish all Belizeans a happy new year. Long live Belize. Que viva Belize.